quick side note before we start. My whole master's thesis was about um, how chemotherapy causes secondary cancers. So I am going to link my thesis down below in the description box if you want to check it out. If you do check it out, let me know what you think. Uh, I will also put an abstract just to give you an overview if you don't want to read the whole thing. And yeah, on with the video. So we all know that chemotherapy treats cancer, but did you know that in addition to treating cancer, chemotherapy, drugs and radiation therapy are also carcinogenic? And that means that they can cause cancer. So some types of chemotherapy drugs have been linked with different kinds of secondary cancers. Secondary cancers are new primary cancers, so it isn't just a case of the patient relapse thing. This is a brand new cancer. They are unrelated to the first cancer that was treated and may occur months or even years after initial treatment. The cancers most often linked to chemo are myelodysplastic syndrome, MDS, and acute myelogenous leukemia, or AML. Myelodysplasia is a blood cancer where the normal parts of the blood are either not made or are abnormal. Sometimes MDS occurs first and then it turns into AML. And then we have acute lymphocytic leukemia, or AAL, and that has also been linked to chemo. Chemo is known to be a greater risk factor than radiation therapy in causing leukemia. Alkylating agents such as melphalan and carmostine um, keep the cell from reproducing by damaging its DNA. And these drugs work in all phases of the cell cycle and are used to treat many different types of cancer. But because these drugs damage DNA, they can affect the cells like those of the bone marrow which make new blood cells and in rare cases this can lead to leukemia. The risk of leukemia from alkylating agents is dose dependent, meaning that the risk is small when um, lower doses are given, but this goes up as the total amount of drug used gets higher. So the risk of leukemia after getting alkylating agents is highest about 5-10 to 10 years after treatment. And the risk gets higher with um, higher drug doses, longer treatment time and higher dose intensity, so more drug given over a short period of time. And studies have shown that leukemia risk begins to rise about 2 years after treatment with alkylating agents and it becomes highest after 5-10 to 10 years. Topoisomerase inhibitors such as atopicide stop cells from being able to repair DNA and atopicide is a drug that is commonly used to treat testicular cancer. These drugs can also cause leukemia, mainly AML, and they can increase the risk of a secondary cancer as early as 2-3 to three years after the drug is given. Leukemia develops sooner after treatment with these drugs than the leukemia from alkylating agents. Most cases are found within 2 or 3 years of treatment and without MDS occurring first. Drugs called anthracylines are also topoisomerase inhibitors but anthracylines are less likely to cause leukemia than the other topoisomerase inhibitors. So the risks of secondary cancers following radiotherapy and chemotherapy have been established, beyond doubt, but they are often dismissed as of little importance on the grounds that without the treatment, patients would not even have survived long enough to even be at risk in the first place. And this argument is clearly valid for a number of types of cancer, such as Hodgkin's, um, several childhood malignancies, and testicular cancer. For some other types of cancer, survival is very poor even when chemotherapy or radiotherapy is used in advanced stages, and the issue of long-term risk does not even come into the picture. So it's the intermediate cases that cause the most difficulty in establishing which way the risk-benefit calculation turns out. And the information required to make a full assessment is, in many cases, unavailable. We do have an idea of long-term risk and short-term benefit, but information is lacking on the relationship between the two curves after, say, like 10 years following treatment. So it's a little bit of a catch-22. This video is sponsored by Squarespace, which is a website builder. But there are so many other amazing things you can do with Squarespace. Not only could you turn your cool idea into a new website or start blogging, but you could also promote your business, sell products and services of all kinds and so much more. And Squarespace makes this so easy by providing beautiful templates created by world-class designers, e-commerce tools to let you sell just about anything online, the ability to customize look and feel, settings, products, and more with just a few clicks. So go check out squarespace.com forward slash science with kitty for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code science with kitty to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you for watching. Bye.